The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 6th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely know that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us, well, I'd say feel free to give us a call. The phone lines aren't working, but what you can do is you can send me an email. Now, send that off early. Send that to Steve at TFN.com. Just inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we have a sea of green out there with regard to all of you ascendancies that we track. For example, Dow's up 1281, 1281 points, that is, 3% move. 1 in 7 tenths percent for the S&P, 102 points. 1 in 8 tenths for the NASDAQ, 100, 365 points. Russell's up 99 points. That's a 4 and 3 tenth percent move there. Some is up 90 bucks, less than 2%. Trend is up 618 points. That's a 3.7% move to the upside. New York Stock Exchange up one and a quarter points or 233 out there. Gold's off 70 bucks off of the session lows. Silver is down a buck 40. Trade down to 3137. Natural gas is up three cents at 234. Light to crude up 55 pennies at 72.54. And the 30 year treasury 115.25. That's down nearly two and a half points as we speak right now. Now, our leaders to the downside are Eli Lilly, LLY is off 35 bucks, Equinix is down 35 for Solar 28, uh, Lennox International 27, MSCI is down 23. The biggest percentage there comes from First Solar. We take a look at the movers to the upside, uh, led by United Rentals, a $72 move, nearly 9%. Goldman Sachs, 67 bucks, almost 13%. O'Reilly Automotive, 59 bucks, 5%. Saya up 48 bucks, 10%. And Martin Marietta, Martin Marietta is up uh, 46 bucks. That's an 8% move to the upside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin by taking a look at our uh, New York Stock Exchange, the Advanced Client Oscillator. We are still below the zero threshold level. How about that? Uh, even with this rally out there. So we're watching. You need to see two consecutive days above the uh, zero threshold level. If we stay down below it, it tells us that sellers are still in control of the market. So something to pay attention to. Now, the spot fix index is saying, I don't know what you mean. The uh, sellers are the ones that are in control. Stevie, we're trading below the 50-day exponential moving average. That is most certainly true. The 50 days is at 1899. We're printing right now at uh, 1651. That's a negative one-day rate of change of 1942 percent. Why is that important? Well, the reason that's important is because if we get any close below minus 10 percent with regard to the spot fix index, that's going to generate a initiation to higher price signal. Those are the green arrows. Now, I just put today's green arrow in there. It may change at day's end, but you can take a look at other green arrows and you can see that in almost every instance, price has led to higher highs out here. Now, typically, it's better when this signal, I found it's better when the signal forms at the lows out here. That's not really what's taking place. As an example, here we had this uh, a one day rate of change, negative one day rate of change, trading session of October the 16th out there. And we were at the highs. 
What that led to was basically one further day of highs out there before we saw a decline. But just be aware that that one-day rate of change below minus 10%. Um, is telling us that price wants to move higher out there. So what else can we look at here? Uh, we can look at the apogee and perigee pivot points, which we have been well below. We took those out uh, this morning at about uh, 4 o'clock to 1 o'clock. One, one thirty. I was up at one thirty. It's up through a lot of the evening, not enough. Uh, I happened to get up at about 12.30, saw some comments inside the den, didn't really see anything that I could uh, add to that was uh, in there, but was was there when it was clear that uh, Trump had got to 267, I believe, and so Alaska was kind of a, a foregone conclusion out there. And so at that stage is when he won. And then the market just simply absolutely just ripped and uh, took off. In fact, in the ES Mini, it was able to get above that Apogee pivot point. Apogee pivot point for it is 58.86. Now, if price up pulls back, that would be a level of support from an intraday standpoint. If we close below it, well, then it's going to give us a different signal. The different signal as we speak right now is really coming from the NQ. The NQ is struggling at its Apogee pivot point, which is 27.55. We got one close above it, and then we immediately moved back below that. So that's the area to really be watching inside the NQ is 27.55. 55. If we close above it, we continue to close above it, that would be an indication that we have a further rally out there. What else should we take a look at? You have the U.S. dollar index obviously move gigantically to the upside out there. So we're going to take a look at at least the currency pairs or three of the currency pairs that make up 83% of the weighting for the U.S. dollar index. Uh, the last piece of uh, – Last chart on the black background screens right now that I should share with you are the new profiles that have formed. So if we take a look at the ES Mini, that's the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see profile resistance up at 5901. It says 5900.75. So that's the exact number out there. If we close above that, then that's going to suggest the move to the 60-1275 level, the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, the NQ has got a TD9 count top. Uh, at the 21,237 level, at 21,261, we've got an A to B equals CD pattern out here. So uh, that's a resistance level, but it's that new profile that's providing us resistance there. So we looked at the Apogee pivot point, not great with this kind of rally to be below that level out there. And then we can see we have resistance at the top of its daily profile, 2788.50. So close above that would give us an indication that price should make that move, that measured move all the way back to its highs out there. Maybe it gets above it, but maybe it doesn't. But watch today. If we don't close above it, well, then we have to really see what else is going on inside the NQ charts and where things close. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it formed a new profile yesterday. It just took that out. It was a very narrow banded profile. And now what uh, we're doing is we're trading above the one to one A to B equals CD price projection. That says that the next price target area is at 44 to 10. We take a look at the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 now closing above profile resistance. I assume it will unless it really pulls back today. If 23.11.40 is the number. If we close above that, you can see we're already in an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Uh, what price is at is the 1.272 expansion level. The next upside price target would be at 24.95. That's the message of the daily time frame charts for the equity future contracts. So what do we do next? I'll tell you what we do next. Let's say uh, we've got about only about 10 or 15 seconds out here. Let's change our windows. Let's go see what's going on on the intraday charts here for the ES Mini. And what I can share with you, it's really the 60-minute time frame chart that you should be watching. Why is that, Stevie? Because we formed a nice TD9 count top. We did that at 4 o'clock this morning, and since then we've been trading sideways to lower. Now, price has successfully tested support. The first support level was at 5901.35. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the intraday charts here for the ES Mini out there, and we're identifying the uh, uh, the level of resistance, what pattern was present at that, and that was a 16-minute time frame chart. So this is really about the only time frame that you need to uh, mention. Now, we've had a successful test of support after that TD9 count pattern. And the key next key area is going to be the oscillator and change line. It's right now at about 59 36, let's say. If price was able to close above that oscillator and change line, we'll get back to retest that TD9 count, and we may take it out. And that says that today, if we see any kind of close on a hourly basis above the level of 59.54, that's going to signal that we are going to continue to move higher. What are the next levels of support here? Well, 59.01 was the level that was tested about uh, three hours ago. If price were to get back below or inside that profile, uh, then we'd see a move back towards the buy zone, and that's between 58.75 and 58.83 out there. So to the upside, you're watching basically the 59.36.7-ish area. To the downside, you're watching 59.01. Whichever those two cracks, meaning a close above or below on a hourly time frame, that's going to tell you the next direction where price might head to. As we take a look at these other time frame charts out here, there's just not much that I see worthwhile for us to uh, pay attention to. There's another topping signal out there. What else should we look at here? Good question. Um, really nothing else that I can think of, but let's do this. Let's put that NQ set of charts up there. So we know the NQ is dealing with resistance levels, one being the top of the profile, two being the uh, Apogee pivot point, and that ap the Apogee pivot points don't uh, change until... Uh, I think maybe the 13th or 14th uh, when Perigee comes in. They don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure we're right around that time frame. Here we take a look at the NQs on the daily time frame. You can see that price is up at the top of its profile. Uh, let's see what uh, time frame, intraday time frame, has got a topping signal. It's not the 60 minute. Uh, well, hold on a minute. Hold on, Stevie. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, hi, 27.31 and a quarter. When did that close at? Nope. So we still have a TD9 count top that's in place for the for the NQ. And with that, I'll just simply expand out the chart while I'll be looking at the same thing. And that TD9 count top has got resistance 
at the uh, 2731.25 level. Now, we're trading above that right now. This is the 60-minute time frame. We still have 40 minutes to go before this bar closes. But if cl price closes above 2731.25 for the 60-minute time frame chart, that's going to suggest that we get a further rally. Price right now just consolidating with inside its daily profile, though, at this moment in time, is trying to take out the top of that profile for the 60-minute time frame. Uh, on a 30-minute basis, we now have a confirmed Roachman indicator top out here. Price is testing uh, for this time frame, the level where a counter trend rally would end, and that was at 2,697.50 out here. Um, if price is to close below that, we'll likely see a move to 26.55, and below that, 25.73 out there. So the high that you'd be watching on a 30-minute time frame is the high of the last half hour, 28.22, even steaming. If we close above that, then we're likely going to head higher out there. Um, what else do we need to look at inside the NQ charts? I would have to say nothing else other than, well, I take that back, a couple of things. So let's look at the 240-minute time frame chart out here. The 240-minute time frame chart is taking on breakdown resistance at 27.54. It's also likely to form a TD9 count top between 2 p.m. and uh, 8 p.m. this evening out here. And that's coming from the four, uh, wait, uh, 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. this evening out there. So that'd be something to be watching if you're up watching uh, futures out here. The two-hour time frame chart is going to form a TD9 count pattern as we come into the 12 o'clock hour. So in order for that to happen, uh, by 12 o'clock, the NQ must still be trading above 2699.25. If price closes above that, as we come into the uh, as we come into the uh, uh, the noon time frame out here, uh, is it noon? Sure. Yeah, the noon time frame out there. Uh, then you're going to have a TD nine count. Now that pattern would complete at 2 p.m. this afternoon. So the NQ is signaling to you and I right now that it's not ready to uh, take off to the upside. All it's done is traded up into resistance. We've got these tops that are in place out there, so we should see some retracements. The question are. Does price just simply pull back to support? So as an example, the two-hour time frame chart support level would be between 2527 and 2568 out there. The four-hour time frame chart wouldn't have support until you get to about the 2447-ish area out there. So it would really be the two-hour chart that you're keeping your eye on. So I'd say it's a two-hour chart, it's a 60-minute time frame chart, and a 30-minute time frame chart. The first most important level is coming from that 30-minute chart, 2697 out there. So that's what's going on inside the ES and the NQ. Uh, let's begin with our first question that came in, and it's coming in from Tim B, and he's asking about um, uh, FXI, Alibaba, and JD. Really, the question is, what's going on inside of China? Uh, so let's go take a look at their set of charts out here. Obviously, their markets are closed, but they were open uh, when the uh, when it was clear at 1.30 in the morning that uh, Donald Trump was going to become the uh, next president of the United States. If we take a look at the Shanghai index out here, the Shanghai, you know, had that beautiful stimulus that just simply sent its market uh, uh, rallying higher. But it top with a TD9 count pattern. you got to love that. So the TD9 count tops, what does price do? Pulls back to test that oscillator and change line out there. Prices held that. We uh, closed back above it yesterday. Uh, we tested and rejected it today. This is suggesting to Stevie that what the Shanghai index is telling you, Tim, and GTE, is that it wants to move higher. In the case of the Hang Seng, we just simply had a sideways move, quite frankly, ever since about the uh, middle of October out there. So for half of a month plus, we've been trading sideways. There's nothing here to suggest that we won't really do the same. Today was an inside bar. Yesterday was a test of that resistance level. You got to watch the 2109931. So is China going to fall apart because Trump was elected? Well, that certainly was not its message last night out there, much to the chagrin, I suppose, of the narrative. If we take a look at the Nikkei 225, the Nikkei 225, now this retracement, there's no A to B equals CD pattern. This uh, move to the downside on November 1st was more than a 0.786 retracement of its first move up. But we are trading above where we closed above its oscillator and change line. We did close, though, right where we ran into its gap. And this was a gap to the upside uh, that took place on October the 15th out there. Um, does that mean that we found resistance we're going to trade lower? We could. Um, but uh, right now, conditions remain bullish, just running into a resistance zone. So as your pilot, I'd just say, you know, the fastened seatbelt signs have definitely come on. So nothing has really fallen apart in Asia out there. If we see what's going on in Europe. Well, that's a whole different story. In the, if in the case of the FTSE, now I don't have a live feed going on right now. Let me switch over to some, some another one of my tabs. 
Um, the FTSE right now is trading at uh, it's off. It's at the uh, eighty-one fifty-four level. Uh, so it's actually even trading uh, lower than uh, what I show on my screen. So uh, what this did yesterday and today was test and rejected that red oscillator and change line. That suggests that we're going to at least go back and test its TD9 count. A uh, top out there, we mo we would most definitely do that if price today were to close below 81.59.63. So that's a number to note on your pad of paper. And if we take a look at the DAX out here, the DAX today rallying up nicely into that green oscillator and change line. It has found resistance there, and that suggests that we move lower. Now, in the case of the uh, if we get it closed below the low of October 31st, that low, so it closes, I think it closed now in four minutes, the DAX. Uh, so we'd be watching this overnight or tomorrow morning and one watch the low of 19.00497. The price closed below that, we would have a new A to B equals CD to the downside structure out there. We come back from this break. Now that we know what's going on in the international markets. We're going to take a look at FXI, Alibaba, uh, JD, Now, NVIDIA. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at our first request coming in from Tim B. and GT as well. Wanted to take a look at the FXI. Uh, guys, the FXI is simply consolidating with inside its daily profile. It's right now, it's trading into its buy zone on a daily basis between 31.16 and 31.79. We're consolidating on the weekly time frame between 3017 and 3628, consolidated on the monthly time frame out there. So your resistance here, 3344 on the monthly. Um, if you can close above 3262 on the weekly, you get up to likely 3628. Resistance on the daily, two levels, 3304, followed by 3381. So just a consolidation for all three time frames. Uh, thanks much for asking, guys. Uh, Tim also wanted to take a look at Alibaba. BABA -B -A is the ticker symbol. This is now trading below the bottom of its daily profile. If it were to close below the swing point here, from October 24th, that low is 95.52. Uh, it's been tested. That swing point has volume of 13.6 uh, million. Well, today we're moving down with volume. We're already at nine and a half million shares at only two hours of trading. So you want to watch that swing low out there uh, because that could then trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. I don't know if it's enough of a retracement though from uh, what's what's now on you know Basil Chapman uh, wave uh, D out there to that uh, little bit of retracement here that found resistance at the sell zone from its daily time frame. What I would say here is let's forget the A to B equals CD patterns out here. Price is very likely to go target its breakout level at 86.95. That's the message of the daily time frame. That message will be confirmed on Friday if price close below 97.19. That is the oscillator and change line. Price is below its bullish structured weekly profile. So a close below that's going to suggest lower price. So 86.95 is reasonable. On a monthly base, we're back inside its profile. So next level of support on a move lower would be down at the 90.83 level. So it looks like Alibaba wants lower price out there. Uh, let's take a look at uh, JD.com. Uh, get to that chart, see what it's providing us with signals, a consolidate, I take that back. It has a brand new profile that formed yesterday, and price is already below that level. So here, the swing point that we'd be looking at for an A to B equals CD pattern is from October 17th. That has 17 million shares. Today we have done seven, nearly 8 million shares. So it does look like it'll have the volume. So this has a TD9 count top. Let's draw in the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So we go from its TD9 count top down to the swing low from October 17th. Let's just copy and paste. And now let's assemble. And let's go take this over to the high that takes place after the low that we use for our B point. One to one gets us down towards the 33.24 with 32.03 being this TD9 count breakout level. Now, that will not take place, that A to B equals CD to the downside, until we see a close below 36.89. 36.89 is the oscillator and change line. I can see a sell the D point top that formed out here, but price has pulled back and it's done it today. It has tested and thus far rejected that green oscillator and change line. So, Tim, watch the level of about 36.89 out there. Uh, if it holds, then we likely see a rally and uh, the A to B equals CD pattern that we're looking at on a daily time frame uh, doesn't come to fruition. But that's really going to be the uh, point of uh, no return if price closes below that 36.88 level out there. Um, that's about all that I see here. Long-term resistance at 48.72. That's coming from your monthly chart. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. So that's what I see when we take a look at uh, JD.com. Hope that helps you out. David in Panama City is looking for some uptight, upside price targets for NOW. As we put these charts up here, we can see a nice move today. You've got a, uh, a gap to the upside. You have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that is still triggered. That requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top out there. Um, now, I think in this one here, yeah, it was now. Your questions, you know, are where is the upside? So we're at new all-time highs out here um, as we speak. So for this, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here, Dave, is I'm going to go back to the uh, black background charts. On the black background charts, I've got my A to B equals CD2. I don't have to cut and paste and assemble. And I can give you some accurate numbers as far as price targets. So on a monthly time frame, start from right to left out here. Uh, if we use the swing point low that takes us back into the 200, 2016 time frame, that was in February 2016, that's our A point. Our B point is out here on the trading week of uh, a month of November of 2021. 
pulls back, forms a low, about a 56% retracement into October of 2022. And now what you can see is this month we have hit the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection level, 998.61. Now, that requires a bearish reversal candidate to confirm a top. Notice how price is trading along the left-hand side of its uh, C to D leg. That tells us that this is likely to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD over time, longer period of time, and 1178 being that price target. The weekly, uh, the month weekly chart, I've got an A to B equals C CD pattern with a 30.382 retracement, actually 37.07. That suggests to move up to 11.16.31. And now we take a look at the daily A to B equals CD pattern out here. Well, it vanished. Uh, let's go ahead and put this one in. We'll do this live. So what we're using here is, you know, a little bit more of a conservative A to B equals CD. Nonetheless, the A point is going to be May 31st, 2024. B point is going to be the high from July 24th, and the C point is going to be the low from August the 5th. That gives us a 49% retracement. We're already above the one-to-one. -one. So 10, 16, 20 is a likely price target. So use that data for your, uh, uh, I think you've got some call positions or something expiring next week, maybe. I, I don't recall that because I read that earlier this morning. But uh, those are the price targets as we speak right now. Again, the only caution sign would be if you were to see a bearish reversal candle on the daily time frame, because that would then go ahead and confirm a Rosemont indicator top. John C. would like to take a look at NVIDIA. Let's put those charts up on our screen here. NVIDIA is trading into its uh, Rosemont indicator top. In order to negate that signal, you need a close above uh, 144.13. We're at 144.06 right now. We close above that level. That's likely going to signal a further move higher. That's coming from the daily time frame chart. The weekly chart, we're above the green oscillator and change line and profile resistance. Uh, that's suggesting that we, you're not seeing the, oh, sorry about that. I did change screens. Thank you, Mr. Bill, my wingman out there. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for not letting me go on like that. And luckily, my eyes saw that. So here, now we've got the NVIDIA chart. Do we look, did, did uh, yeah, the NVIDIA chart. So the NVIDIA chart, you've got this uh, Rosemont Dominicator signal that formed out here in the trading day of October 22nd. Then you get that bearish shooting star that forms on October 25th. That bearish shooting star is resistance level. The top of that is 144.13. We're trading above. Well, we're not trading above it right now. But if we do close above that, it negates that signal and says that we move higher out here. Um, the weekly chart on Friday is going to need a close above 144.82 to generate a similar message out there. And on a monthly basis, you know, right now we are trading above profile. We're trading above its TDN account top. So on a monthly basis, things look pretty good out there. So that's what I see, John, when I uh, take a look at the charts for NVIDIA. I think today's close will be really important. Does resistance fail out there? And then to, on Friday, it's going to be about the uh, resistance set up by the uh, October 28th high. And that level is up at... Uh, 144.82. Hey, folks, I'm going to be recording tomorrow's show from 8 to 9 and very likely Friday's show from 8 to 9 as well. So just mark that on your calendar and uh, you're not seeing my charts. You should. You should absolutely see my charts. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, GDX. This is for uh, Tom C. His question is, uh, do we have a bottom here? Uh, and we do. We have, as you can see, today is going to be the bar following bar number nine out there. So you've got an absolute daily TD nine count bottom pattern that is in place out here. Uh, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart shows that price is now pulling back and testing the level where a counter trend move would end. Now, it doesn't matter that it's held that level today, Tom. It matters if it holds that level on Friday, that level being 3814 out there. But yeah, it's given us a signal that, in fact, we could potentially have a bottom inside the GDX. We certainly have a bottom pattern that is completed today. So there's no doubt about that. But the question is, will that bottom hold? What are gold and silver going to do out there? So that's really part of our question on a weekly time, on a monthly time frame. I'm just trying to delete this thing here. On the monthly time frame, you've got a TD9 count uh, topping pattern that is going to go ahead and likely confirm this month in order to do that it must close above at month's end above the price point of um 37.93 out there uh so daily and weekly are suggesting that you have a bottom now what we have to do to try to confirm that is go take a look at intraday charts so let's start doing that for you let's put up a, a 30 minute time frame see what kind of signal we have if any out here so that's the first chart and um, we don't have a uh, confirming signal at this stage here of a bottom for its 30 minute time frame. Do we have that for the 65 minute time frame chart? I'm gonna sense that we don't. And yet we do not have that bottom signal uh, just yet. So if we go down to even a shorter term time frame, for example, a 15 minute time frame, what do we have out here? Um, we might have a wave seven bottom, but let me just see where that's taking us back to. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. So I don't really have that on the intraday time periods out here. Um, so maybe it's time really to start looking at the individual stocks out there and what they're doing. But uh, yes, Tom, uh, there's absolutely a, a daily TD9 count bottom with uh, price being uh, getting back to the support level that you'd love uh, to see hold for the weekly time frame. Uh, we've got uh, from InnoVisual, uh, he would like to take a look at the Russell 2000. So too would... Um, Nicholas, I believe, who wrote in. So let's go take a look at uh, those charts out here. And the question is, you know, where are they headed to? What is their intent? So to answer that question, what I want to look at, and the question was really what's going on in the cash industry, the equity future contract, and the IWM. So as we take a look at each of these, first thing we're looking at is what kind of signal do we have today out here? So I'm going to open up the weekly time frame chart. Uh, the weekly time frame chart... 
Where did that, where did that, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Yeah, so you are in wave number seven to the upside. That needs a lower high to confirm that pattern. So that's a caution sign right now. That's coming from the Russell 2000 equity future contract. If I take a look at the daily cash indice out there, we do not have that same pattern. This has us being in uh, the sixth wave out there, or letter F. Do I see a top? I do not see any kind of a top. A price is taking out a Rhodes Mintum indicator top from July 31st of 2024. So that looks uh, bullish out there. And that's coming from the cash indice. If you take a look at the IWM, the IWM, let's open this up. Let's pull this back just a tad. The IWM trade a new all-time high, taking out a wave seven top out there. That wave seven top was from the trading day of uh, July 31st. Um, do I see a topping signal out here? I do not. So right now, the charts for the IWM are suggesting that it wants to continue to go higher. That was a question from Inno Visual out there. So, uh, Inno, I hope that that helps you out with that request. And as always, thanks so much for playing the game. Hey, let's give Stevie something to talk about. Um, I want to save that space. I do. Let's go to our next request out here, uh, which is... Um, I didn't write down who was asking about that, but basically it was asking about silver and the silver stocks. So uh, let's go, we're on this page right here, and it's possible, it is possible that silver is bottoming today. What pattern would it be bottoming with? The bottoming pattern would be getting back to its breakout level support. I'll just simply open up this chart, make sure everybody's looking at the daily silver chart. It's got a nice TD9 count top out there. And the question is, does 3094 hold the support? The actual low of the day so far, was at 3094. I mean, how does that work? That's the beauty of the TD9 count pattern out there. It is objective, not subjective at all. What I can guarantee you is none of us were trained to find that as a breakout level. Not a chance out there. But in fact, that's what it is. It's objective. That's what I like about it. That's the area to watch is 3094. So that's held as support. Um, on a weekly time frame, price has gotten back to the buy zone. Not exactly to it. The buy zone on a weekly basis is between 3014 and 3084 out there. Now, gold has more work to do to the downside. It suggests to move back to 2645. But let's go take a look at a, a um, silver stock out here. And the silver stock that I chose uh, was to take a look at Pan American Silver. So let's get let's get back to that chart. There we go. In the case of Pan American Silver, you can see that today is bar number nine of a TD9 count. You can see on the weekly basis, price got back and tested so far and rejected the top of its weekly profile at 2134. Pan American Silver does not have a topping pattern on its monthly time frame. And at, a, uh, at the end of the month, if it can close above 2306 like it did last month, that would be a breakout message to suggest 3463 is on the horizon out there. Now, you could still get a lower blow tomorrow and still have a daily TD9 count pattern, but you have to like today's price action. And uh, so you've got the daily silver contract at a key level of support that is held, uh, Pan American Silver. And so if you're asking, which I think you were, are the silver stocks dead and is silver dead? And at this moment, 1148 in the morning, we can absolutely say the answer to that question is no. Now that might change later on in the day or change tomorrow, but right now, uh, that's what the message of the markets are, that key, level, key levels of support have held. Eddie would like to take a look at Intel. Eddie would like to begin a long position in Intel. So. What are we doing? Daily time frame is testing a swing point, Eddie. Uh, 927 is the uh, date that we're looking at. That swing low is 2370. Swing high is 2466. Volume, 85 million shares. Prices into it with 54 million shares. So you're moving into a swing point with volume, have not taken it out. You've tested the high, but you've rejected it. If you still close below that high, that being 2466, that's telling us that price will get up there and at least test that high once again. If we take out that high, then we get a daily A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And for Intel, that number would be, now we got to do, we're going to use the Stevie, oops, the Stevie cut, paste, and assemble method here. Uh, give me a moment. Let's draw in the A to B line out here. So there we go. Now it's just I'm just simply going to move this over to the uh, C point of this pattern, if I can. There we go. The C point's going to be that letter D. Well, let me do this here. And you're going to have to do the risk reward on this, Eddie. Would I do it now when we haven't taken out resistance? No. The one to one would get us up towards the 2741 level. That's for Intel. That's a daily time frame. The weekly time frame chart. 
uh, says that, hey, if we can close so on a weekly basis, Intel's trading into that same swing point-ish, so to speak, which was September 27th. Volume there, 595 million shares. We're halfway through the trading session. We're at 197. So price is pushing into that. Uh, well, I'm sorry. We're only at 197. Um, and we're halfway through the week. So it's not pushing into the weekly swing point with volume out there. So that says something to consider. And uh, your question is, is it worth getting into? What I've been able to share with you is what it's doing, the swing points to take a look at, the price projection levels out there. And uh, I hope that that provides you the information you're looking for. When we come back from this break, we're going to look at Procter & Gamble and IRM from Mohammed. Again, tomorrow morning, tune in from 8 to 9. That's when I'll be recording the show. Of course, we'll replay it in this 11 o'clock hour. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a Procter & Gamble, ticker symbol PG. It's beyond the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD pattern. So if you were to see a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame, Mohammed, that would be your buy signal. Price is trading into a swing point from the trading day of July 30th out there. The volume on that was 15 million shares. So far today, we're into it with about uh, 5 million shares. So we're moving into a similar type volume. Uh, if we close inside that swing point, odds favor, we test that low, that low being 158.04. Um, I don't have anything else more than that. 152.08 is a potential level of support. That comes from the top of the monthly profile. Uh, Mohammed, you also wanted to take like, a ticker symbol, IRM. IRM right now has got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top, 
forming an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, trading below its TD nine count breakout level, 118.38. That says it wants lower price. Now, the key here is going to be Friday. On Friday, does price close below the bottom of its buy zone? 113.75 is the number you're looking at. If we close below 113.75 on a weekly basis, it increases the odds that we're going to pull back towards the uh, 103.12 level. That's the monthly oscillator and change line at the moment. Dan would like to look at Caldwell Bank or CBRE as the ticker symbol. Here we take a look at it. You're going to confirm a roach momentum indicator top today. Big old bearish engulfing candle. That suggests a move back to the 126.01 to 124.62 level. If price were to close below 124.62, the move lower was something different than a counter trend move, and we likely head lower out there. TD9 count top on the weekly. Price should go target 126.01. 73. No topping pattern just yet on the monthly time frame. To finish out the show, we didn't get a chance to go take a look at the currencies out here. Let's at least throw those up on our screen. The euro out here testing a very key level of support, and that's the weekly TD nine count breakout level, 1.07. In other words, if this level holds, well, then the dollar likely rally has stopped. If we take a look at the US dollar, Japanese yen, uh, this is gonna negate a roach momentum indicator top today, continue to move higher. Actually, the yen could target 158 out there. That would put weakness in inside the U.S. dollar index and the uh, the pound right now is signaling that it also wants to move lower. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Remember, tomorrow, please join me live from 8 to 9. If not, I'll do everything I can to make the show as pertinent for the 11 o'clock hour. Take care. Have a wonderful Wednesday.